Look closer. In the shadows. 
Behind the everyday world. Beyond the headlines and the seats of power. A hidden hand. A kind of company known as Providence. To it, we were just assets to use and throw away, to do the unthinkable, the unforgivable, and it never gave us a second thought until now. After decades in the shadows, we are fighting back. Me and 47. Much has been lost, but we are closer than ever. We trapped the Constant, Providence's chief controller, and finally learnt the names of its three partners. In their downfall, we lay the past to rest. And, just maybe, look towards the future. 37. It's time. Partners are down there. You know, I never planned this far ahead. You never do. I see someone got his memory back. Wait, is that a beacon? <laughs> what the hell? Base. Alexa Carlisle's helicopter just took off. Confirm target locations, over. Diana, what's the status? Right. We have a situation. Carlisle has left the building. And I think I know why. The Constant has escaped. He persuaded one of the sailors into setting him free. And since then, he's been seizing control of Providence assets and resources. I can only assume Carlisle is rushing to contain the damage. If she slips away again... We'll keep track of her. Make sure she doesn't. Meanwhile, the plan stays the same. Your destination is the Scepter, the world's tallest building where the partners are laying low, courtesy of their host, Sheikh Omar al-Ghazali. Marcus Stuyvesant is fifth generation old money. His family made its fortune in real estate and banking and were at one point the chief landowners in New York. Carl Ingram is a powerful Washington kingmaker whose family grew rich selling gunpowder during the American Civil War and later established a globe-spanning empire in oil, coal, and steel. Both families long since retreated from public view, but their quiet dominance endures to this day. Now, the partners likely suspect that we're coming, so Mr. Gray will infiltrate building controls and disable all electronic doors and elevators. Stuyvesant and Ingram are about to find they have nowhere left to run. Right. This is our moment, 47. Providence ruined our lives with the flick of a pen. Today, we return the favor. Happy hunting. Welcome, everybody to another round of Roulette Raceway, a uh, round two match between Pidgeyero and Froat7. Joining me on the cast today is my favorite German Hitman speedrunner, Janini. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> That's very specific. Uh, hello, welcome everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, the second match of today, last match was I Like Hitman versus Janini, which Janini has won Six to four, I believe, was the final score. And yeah, first map of this match is going to be Dubai, chosen by the RNG. Um, no Hokkaido this time, sadly. <laughs> Sad. Full stream in German. Well, 
yeah, depending on how much chat annoys us, we could also just swap to German anytime and just continue <laughs> casting in German. <laughs> yeah, like maybe 10% would understand us, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Maybe. If... I, I'm, I'm sure chat will be nice. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Yeah. Pidgeyaro versus Throat7 uh, in the round two of Roulette Raceway. The winner of this will face off against Ducker in the semifinals and uh, might just secure a spot in the grand final. So, yeah. No second chances. As uh, with this entire tournament, there is no lower bracket, no double elimination here. One match lost and you're out. Yeah, makes the stakes for every match a lot higher immediately. Definitely. And yeah, we have we have stacked matches as this. Pajero was both, of course, very, very good roulette players. And so yeah, we will lose one today out from the tournament. But that's how how tournaments are. <laughs> yeah, at the end of a tournament, only one person can remain. Exactly. Right, spin arriving in a minute and 20. Dubai first map, relatively, well, short map, as it's in the uh, short map pool. And the other bad maps in this match are uh, Whittleton Creek and Mumbai from the side of Pidgeyero, and Dartmoor and Chongqing, banned by Throat. So uh, all the season one maps are actually open. Mm. No, no that's uh, new. Here. Yeah, nice. And uh, I mean, the band make makes sense, kinda. I, I know that like um, Frodo is pro plays a really, really good Mumbai, uh, and most players like uh, do not prefer Mumbai, so it's it's uh, makes sense that that's the band. And on the other side as well, like that that more. I would personally always also, like I also like to ban that more or something because it's such a short map and you you have to be so good at it. Uh, otherwise, you get stumped. Yeah. Uh, and Dartmoor, we're basically at the point, if you reset once, you're already lost. So, yeah. Not quite, but exactly. it's, uh, yeah, it's almost. Pidgeyaro is not live for me yet. Um, I'm going to refresh. Uh, he is, he, 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 yeah, we, oh. we went live like two minutes ago. It's uh, uh, live now. Okay. Oh, yeah, there he is. Okay, great. And, yeah, spin is arriving. You can take this one. Oh, thank you. There it is, Carl Ingram with the fire axe as the famous chef, and Marcus Stuyvesant with the silent shotgun as event security. Alright. What do you think of that? It This looks pretty straightforward, not gonna lie. Like, you have the event security plus silent shotgun, so you can eliminate Marcus pretty early in the match, uh, in, the, in, the, in the map, basically at the point where you isolate him. And then um, you should have enough time to go up to to Carl Ingram, catch him on his way up. And I mean, the famous chef is in the area up there. The only thing that you have to uh, take on your way is basically like uh, the fire axe. I don't quite know where these are, but I'm sure Ooh. either okay. they know or they can look it up. Yeah, on hitmaps.com, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so this is interesting. Pijo like went with a really fast start, but immediately got got caught by that guard opening the door. Um, and now they're pretty pretty synchronized with the stars. Yeah. So the interesting thing here, what, what you said is exactly you have that disguise already on you if you can start on it. But like, if you're not starting in the suit, you don't have the shotgun immediately. So you have to get that from a smuggle point. That is um, true. So you have definitely have to get down once more. But I'll assume they'll both uh, knock out the targets first. And then yeah, go go up and down. Get, get the. But by the way, the fire axe is on the on the way down the like the stairwell down to the kitchen. On like, it's really close to yeah, to I where knockout stars and. I know about one fire axe. I'm not sure if there are more than that. On the yeah, map. I mean, I actually don't know. Like normally there are multiple fire axes, but I'm <laughs> actually not sure on Dubai. I, this is the only one I, I ever uh, used or or saw. It's yeah, like, I'm, I'm not sure either. I think for for the most part, it's the most uh, the, the easiest one to get to, basically. Um, but I don't know, there might be one uh, more towards the top of the map at, in the penthouse or something that might be easier to get for this one. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, here Pigiero taking out uh, Marcus Stuyvesant. Frode is about to do the same, and uh, Frode. 
think they both already have taken out um, Carl Ingram as well. But Pidgey... They did, yeah. Pidgey just ripped there again by the guard that is roaming around down here. <laughs> In the meantime, Throat picked up the Fire Axe that is just around that corner right there. And is most likely going to go uh, get the Carl Ingram kill now. Seems like he's heading that way. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um, that doesn't make very much sense. Then you can, like, uh, get the famous chef. And then all the way downwards, uh, grab, his, grab his shotgun and uh, kill Cyrus and then exit right there with the elevator. That is very efficient routing. Yeah. So, yeah, Pidgeyero again um, with the same strategy here. Just immediately taking out Carl Ingram. So he doesn't go off wandering into penthouse where he's really hard to to isolate, really. Um, exactly. So, yeah. In the meantime, Frode has obtained the famous chef disguise. Has the fire axe stashed down here as well. So he is uh, closing in on his first kill. And there it Oops, is. There we go. And yeah, as I expected, like that's the most convenient point. Uh, uh, the the in the penthouse supply room, which confusingly named both are both uh, two final points which into his rooms. So uh, definitely can happen that you stash your your shotgun or whatever in the in the wrong place. That would be a yeah, I mean, problem. But they look the yeah. same on the on the like preview pictures, and they are yeah sometimes exactly. not where you expect them to be. So yeah. Exactly. But I mean, at, at least it's like penthouse supply room. And if you know it, then it's not that hard. But yeah, uh, first should be very close to exiting. Okay, got the shotgun, got the disguise, got the kill, and now gonna exit with the elevator. It should be GG. Yeah, that is the GG to throw here. Uh, relatively clean. Clean done in three minutes uh, in game time. A bit more. Of course, we had some rips here and there. A bit of a rough start for both players. But in the end, Dubai is in fact one hell of a quick map. Right. PG is still playing. Let's see when he uh, notices the ping on Discord that he lost this round. <laughs> See really soon. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, very fast 2 0. Yes, definitely. Pidgeero now on the back foot, but has the map pick, so uh, of course he can now pick something that he is strong on. <coughs> Chris is uh, predicting a Mendoza here. Oh, I'd love to see more Mendoza. <laughs> after I failed so <clears throat> miserably at it earlier. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, Pidgeero's still going. Sadly, he'll yeah, realize... Yeah, he's gonna finish the spin. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think he realized that doesn't matter. He should be finished now as well. A bit of a fast in-game time, of course, that doesn't matter. Because he ripped two times with that guard. Yes. And yeah, it's interesting now what this map will be. And it actually is oh, yeah, going to be Pikmin. the Mendoza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, right. Pikmin, nice. So, Love it. Uh, we have a short five minute break. So let's have a quick look at what Mendoza is all about. <laughs> I found something. Buenos Aires International Airport this morning. Now watch this. Heralds. Trail ends at the airport, but turns out that a top Providence operative owns a vineyard in the area. Don Yates, of infamous New York law firm Morgan Yates and Cohn. And get this, it's hosting his retirement party today. She's infiltrated them. She's sending a message. She needs my help. Could have fooled me. You don't know her. Anyway, if you're going after her, you'll need to deal with the Herald. Her name's Tamara Vidal, former CIA asset and political firebrand. She's a master of surveillance and the Constance's most trusted aide. She'll have eyes everywhere. You won't get far as long as she's in the game. Why are you telling me this? 
I thought you were out. Yeah. Old habits, I guess. Anyway, I... I need to go. See you around, 47. No, you won't. And here we are again with the second map in the match between Pidgeyero and Frode 7. Yeah, Frode won the first map, being Dubai. Now Pidgeyero's choice was Dartmoor. Eh, what Dartmoor? How did I come up with Dartmoor? Mendoza. <laughs> <laughs> um, Both the best maps, I guess. <laughs> yes, but uh, one is banned and one isn't. So yeah, no Dartmoor today. We actually could be seeing uh, Haven today, since it isn't banned. But that's true. I I think it's it's some sort of a gentleman's agreement here that uh, none of these players <laughs> is gonna pick Haven, unless they really want to annoy themselves and their opponent. Yeah, I mean I haven't played Haven uh, in Hitman Two yet, but I I have heard and seen uh, yeah the same problems. <laughs> so. I yes. have. I think I haven't come across one person that said um, they like to play Haven in Roulette. I mean, I actually, I actually did like it uh, in Hitman 2. Um, but if, if, if it's true that like, there are so many issues in Hitman 3 now, then um, <laughs> that maybe changed. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't play uh, Roulette on Haven yet, so can't really say anything about that. Hmm. Maybe if I mean, uh, Frode is gonna go like four zero up, he's gonna just <laughs> RPG's just gonna pick Haven here. Go all in on Haven, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Alright, thirty seconds until the spin arrives. PG getting some last minute practice in. <laughs> and he's he's playing on yes. PC, so this is not it's not like preloading or anything that's not a not a thing on pc i think yeah. i mean it still helps like it's it's, a, it's two three seconds faster but it's not 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 a huge amount anyway yeah. spin in a few seconds yes you take it i will yes all right we have to eliminate or they have to eliminate don akiba the yates using the machete as the asado chef and uh, Tamara Vidal using an SMG as the head of security. Wow, those disguises. <laughs> yep. Um, so I expect a Sailor Z- Chef starts here. Uh, everything <laughs> else would really surprise me. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Maybe go for some Yanini strats here and just knock out every yeah. single NPC until you get the Sailor Chef. I'll be quite viable. Um, Macheri should be. Yeah. Not too bad. Head of security, of course. It's it's all a bit of a yeah. It's definitely one of the harder disguises. Mm, I'm not sure what those players will do. I personally like like really much uh, like dropping a weapon next to him and he will take it away. But I'm 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 curious what they will come up with. And let's see. Yeah, uh, seen numerous uh, strats for getting the head of security disguise. Uh, one issue kind of is. Um... If you let him go at the start of the map, or what, like when you trigger the conversation with uh, Corvo Black, he actually starts moving, and you can lose him pretty easily. I think I, I like I don't exactly know his cycle afterwards where he goes like, and yeah, so uh, if you lose him once, it's gonna be a hard time. But I mean, both players only at the villa right now, so not uh, triggering that conversation just yet. Exactly. Um, not sure what Pidgey is going, uh, both like starting with the Thaler Chef, that makes sense, both going for, oh, it's smart, Pidgey used the time to go for the, uh, for the Macheri in the, in the chat. That's kind of risky, because it's not allowed there, of course, but if it works out, that's really efficient usage of time. Yeah, oh, so much gonna get for spotted, yes. very risky there, unfortunately got spotted yep. there. <clears throat> yep. In the meantime. But, yeah. Frode has uh, infiltrated the mansion. It's just waiting for uh, Yates to come up. Just subdues him yes. around the corner and has him down now. Of 
course, no life kill, so you can very easily just uh, KO both targets and then go for the difficult disguises and weapons. Or the more difficult disguises and weapons, I guess. Exactly. I mean, I thought Max uh, wants to get one of those security disguises. Make, make sure that uh, they don't see the, the Yates while they try to do them, but now he's a disguise. And it's probably gonna go for Tamara now. I hope he has. A, I, I'm pretty sure he has a seeker on him. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense for him right now to take the mercenary disguise there, because uh, now the Sado chef just stays near Yates where he uh, ends up needing it later. So he can exactly. just uh, enter the uh, the mansion again in any disguise basically, and uh, go up there and kill Yates at any times at any time. Exactly. This time, Pidgey didn't get spotted. He got the machete. And Frodo is also going for the machete. Um, oh, it's, yeah, it's not. I think he, yeah, he interrupted it. It, yeah. Uh, there you are. Why did... What's he doing now? Yeah, that's that's uh, kind of surprising. I hope that's Frodo the, the that's the spin one. conditions correctly. I hope so as well, because that one, he won't need that one. Yeah. Uh, I think the hatchet is that. Uh, it's kind of scary, because he actually, yeah. He is moving in. He got the machete, and it looks very much like he wants to kill Yates with with the um, hatchet. So, that's not good. That is certainly not can, good. Yeah, nerves in related. Oh, like, like the mistakes like that can always happen, but like that's that's why I, before every kill, double read the spin to, to be sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, this looks this this does not look good right now for for Frode here. Nope. And yeah, that's a wrong kill, sadly. That is a restart. In the meantime, now... Pidgey got the correct kill. Um. Very nice. Yeah. He is very far in the lead right now, because Frode right now just keeps going. He hasn't realized yet that he used the wrong kill condition. Uh, or like the wrong exactly. the wrong weapon. And yeah, even if he now finishes faster than PG Arrow, he will have to restart. Yeah, but also like of, of course it doesn't matter because Throat uh Throat one is dead pretty much. But yeah. I, I love like you saw uh Pidgey was like one minute in game time faster with that with getting the machete and, and before knocking out Yates. Um, which was supposed to be risky, but lost the reset too. But if that works, you see, it's like a whole minute faster. It's pretty nice Yeah. Um, time usage of Pidgey. Definitely a nice optimization there, because you have to like wait. Or, you have a certain time window at the, at the start of the map anyways, uh, where you can isolate Frodo when... Uh, exactly. Frodo, not Frodo Yates, whenever. Um, you yeah, can but... just go grab that uh, machete at the start. And Frodo needs to restart now. Yep. He got spotted while... So... Uh, tranking the head of security, I think, or seekering him. Not quite sure. I mean, it's good. For, it's good that he uh, has to reset now. I'm not sure actually. Now, Pijero caught Tamara on the stairs with the medic. I'm not sure if he actually goes to the toilet. Uh, I wouldn't bet on it. But PG looks looks to be confident in it. I mean, I've always seen her go to the toilet, so I, I have never seen her go anywhere else. And it looks like she. I is, mean, it, she yeah, is she is like. It's pretty tight because she only goes to the toilet when you like seek her around that reception area. Otherwise, she's just like it's such a pain because there are so many bins on Mendoza that she got like she goes to a bin every single time if it's not in that area. Yeah, apparently so, they they changed that in in one of the patches. They wrote in the patch notes that they changed the AI um, uh, to um, for targets now to more frequently go to toilets instead of bins. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I think they didn't yet, right? Like, they, they said it's uh, it's a known issue, but they haven't, like, actually patched it yet, I think. I'm not sure. I thought sure. I read that they actually changed it, but I could be wrong on that one. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not, uh, yeah. They're working on a solution, it's not, not there yet. But anyway. Okay, apparently they are working on a solution. <laughs> but right. yeah, hoping that at that level, it's a long problem, long-lasting problem. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Giro has uh, KO'd Tamara in the toilet and is now looking to get the head of security. He has triggered the conversation, so he is on the move now. In the meantime, Frode uh, has already KO'd Yates again. 
and is getting yeah, himself like... a mercenary disguise there. Yeah. Looks like it uh, belongs to Pidgey's plan that uh, they had a security cell moving. So I'm interested what his plan is. Place the coin there. There he comes. Let's get map knowledge. Okay, so there was your quest from earlier. He goes down here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I know he goes down here, but like yeah, everyone yeah, I've like... seen, it just isolates him here, and I don't know where he goes after that. So yeah, but yeah. he has successfully obtained the disguise. So yeah, that's uh, good for him. Also has an SMG in his inventory. So uh, at this point, this should be a a clean sweep from Pigiero here. Yeah, very nicely done. Um, one reset, of course, in the, in the beginning, but after that, a very clean clean play. So, and very fast as well. Yes. All right, let's see which exit he is uh, planning on taking. Uh, might be Tango, he hasn't looked, might okay. not. Yeah, he didn't. I think he didn't get the Diana teleport, so he could just he could just go to the, through the field. I think that would be faster. But yeah, ah. currently it does not look that good. Currently it looks like he's just gonna wait for. Uh, Diana to come down here. Probably, but it shouldn't matter. Like, um, Pro has just started with a spin, and it, it really shouldn't matter. Pro screwed a bit him, um, screwed himself a bit with uh, with that hatchet. Yeah. Otherwise, I think it would have been pretty close. I mean, like this, he, uh, he ripped anyways thing. later, so I'm not sure if it made oh, yeah, like, that's that true. large of a difference, but, um, yeah. That is true, yes. True. And there she comes. Yes. One last Tango 47. <laughs> it's just... In this case, the Tango tied it up. Two to two. Yeah, so that gives a map choice to Frode again. Score two to two. So we'll see who takes the lead in the next map. Ah, did All right, so interested to, interested to see uh, what the next map is gonna be. Yeah, Road has the ch uh, the choice from basically all trilogy maps except Woodsleton Creek, Mumbai, Dartmoor, Chongqing, Dubai, and Mendoza. And it's... we only have we only have Berlin as an H three map anymore. And except all H three maps That's are true. out at this wow. point. Wow. Cause, Holy uh, shit, it's insane that they're all, uh, they're all out already. Two it's of really them insane. have been played, two of them have been banned. And, I mean, the last one is not really a map, so, yeah. So, we're definitely interested to see what the map pick's gonna be. Let's see. What do you Sapienza. Some... Sapienza, all right. I think he picked that um, in an earlier round as well, when he was uh, given the map choice. So yeah. We I mean, it does make sense. Definitely. Uh, season 1 map, one where I'd say uh, Throat is pretty strong on. Oh, for sure. Especially Paris, Sapienza, all those uh, <laughs> he's very good on. Yes. So let's take a short look at Sapienza. Morning 47. Your destination is the coastal town of Sapienza, also known as the jewel of the Amalfi Coast. Your target is a former client of ours, Silvio Caruso, a brilliant but troubled bioengineer employed by the Ether Biotech Corporation. Renowned for his early stem cell research, Caruso is now reportedly working on a far more disturbing project. A DNA-specific virus able to infect anyone, anywhere in the world. Imagine a bullet, fired in any direction, passing through countless bodies without inflicting harm, invisible and undetectable until it strikes its target. A world of armchair assassins killing with impunity. 
This is what awaits us, unless Caruso is stopped. Our client, one of Ether's major private stockholders, wants the project cancelled on ethical grounds, but without destroying the company in the process. She has asked us to eliminate Silvio Caruso and destroy the yet unfinished virus prototype. You will also need to deal with Caruso's lab head, Francesca DeSantis, a high-level Ether employee and cutthroat corporate climber who holds intimate knowledge of Caruso's research and could potentially carry on in his place. This is no ordinary contract, 47. Caruso's virus is a serious threat to our craft and trade, not to mention our core ideals. So failure is not an option. I'll leave you to prepare. Alright, here we are again. Oh, I didn't update the score, damn it. I need to do that quickly. <laughs> Yeah, you have more than enough time still. One and a half minutes. No, wait. This is this is the wrong score. Pro did not win. Uh, <laughs> what am I doing? Rigged. Yeah, definitely it's rigged, rigged at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but nah. Um, excited for some nice chill Italian coastal town action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. PG is getting robbed from his points by me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no anyway all right oh. yeah some uh, nice coastal town in sapienza <laughs> definitely uh, a nice place to live i'd imagine oh for sure it's uh yeah looks looks very uh looks like a very very nice place for sure yeah uh, especially like... the mansion you have like lots of space <laughs> You got a big underground lab for uh, developing secret <laughs> viruses and everything. Yeah, that, that sounds, of course, that, that sounds amazing. Like, uh, in general, uh, proximity to the ocean, all that stuff. Looks like a beautiful little Italian village. Yeah. All right, score right now, dead even. Map obviously picked by Froat, so let's see if he can take the map that he chose himself. Spin is arriving in a few seconds. You can take this one again. Thank you. And we have Silvio Caruso with a sniper rifle as a lab technician. And we have Francesca DeSantis with drowning as biolab security. So two like two uh, guys out of the out of the biolab. Yeah, that's gonna be definitely interesting how to handle the disguises here. You have like both disguises down in the lab, but uh, none of the targets are actually down in the lab. <laughs> yeah, so we definitely have to go up with both of them. Uh, I assume they'll start in the lab. Uh, that would make very much sense here. Then bring one of them up. Probably, probably even like the the security one, just because like you have to. It has to be a live kill. Yeah. Uh, and Sylvia's not a live kill. It can be done at any time. So yeah, let's see how uh, they're gonna approach this one. I, I predict both starting in the bio lab. PG taking out the uh, the cameras. Ooh, yeah. I don't what? think that was planned. Actually, actually never. Oh, <laughs> he he uh, shot through the closed door, and then the guy <laughs> went down to investigate. Uh, yeah, when you open the door, it doesn't happen, of course. But interesting. Yeah, um, he has now placed the remote EMP, so he can just destroy the virus whenever he wants to. Uh, which is definitely a nice benefit. And looks like he's traveling up now. Yeah, Fro doesn't bother with the EMP, he just heads up straight, I think. Grabs the sniper, of course. Grabs the security guy, I assume PG will do the same. Yeah, by the looks of it. Both are gonna travel up the first time in the biolab security disguise. I mean, definitely does make a lot of sense. Uh, I'm interested in like what's actually gonna be faster. I, th I think Fjord is gonna uh, gonna kill the virus with um, with a sniper rifle as he always does. 
Mm, I'm interested about what method will be fast, actually. This could be very close. Yes, definitely. <clears throat> um, not sure, but I think Sapienza is also in the short map pool as one of the season one maps, or? Uh, I think so. I, I mean, think... actually, it's not a sh not like. Mm. Oh, I'll just double check. Ah, no, Paris mm -hmm. is uh, the other yeah. se uh, season one map, Paris and Hokkaido. Makes sense. Yeah, it's a bit more medium. Makes sense. Yeah. It's the third shortest season one map, according to yeah. Info Front. All right, that makes sense. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, now both are near Francesca. Chris how do I poison her? Um, Pidgey. Oh, Pidgey through... went with the throw. Very yeah, nice. It saves, the... saves time. Oh, and oh throw the same. Exactly the same. <laughs> uh, Amazing. Just need to make sure you don't accidentally lock onto her and KO her with the remote emetic. Yep. I think it's probably there earlier and had to wait longer, so could argue with a bit more time, but of course both are very close to that. Now both got her in there though. It could prove a problem. Yes. Uh, and the guard comes back in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening here? <laughs> yeah, both uh, look like they are a bit struggling to get to her right now. Mm, probably the coma, apparently. Oh, guys, ah, got into lockdown, green. but that is, of course, not a problem. Very nice, that's a solve. In the meantime, Pidgeyaro going a bit on a uh, world travel, breaking, break opening some doors, but in the end, he arrives at the same location and almost the same time. Both have the kill on Francesca DeSantis now down and just need the. Silvio Caruso kill now. Yes. Um, I have to say, like, Throw with the Coma had a bit, a bit of an easier time, but uh, I really liked the improvisation of uh, of Pidgey to get to Francesca. That was very nicely done. And and sh show what you can, all the stuff you can do with the Silas pistol. Uh, yeah, if used correctly. Frod now, now has both now, waiting. Yeah, Frod has shot the, the little box at the like observatory. Uh, yes. Lord Silvio there. Um, that is Silvio Caruso. I haven't seen Pidgey do the same thing, but I'm gonna assume he has because for both of them, yes. Silvio is in the same location right now. That might be yeah. a rip for Pidgeyaro there. Oh, that is a bit for Pidgey. It's unconscious witness. Yes, yes, he is. Oh, orange. that is unfortunate. That was a bit too late. That's why was a bit too late. Yeah, that's why I would have would personally wait there and like KO the guy that turned around first because the, the window you ha you have to KO the first guy and then throw it as the second guy is so short. Like I don't think it's worth the risk. Then you can like wait five seconds until the other guy turns around. Yeah, so yeah, very no. unfortunate. I think that. Should probably settle the throat going down with a sniper rifle. Um, just got found, that's not a problem. Changing in the lab, uh, lab technician. And goes up to Silvio, who's knocked out already. Yeah, definitely a big advantage to Throat right now. Has got the first kill done, just needs uh, to get Silvio, who is already down. He has everything in place for him, and then uh, just needs to take care of the virus, which should also not be an easy task at this point. I mean, he could snipe it. I don't know if he has an EMP in his inventory, but he has the sniper rifle in hand, so that uh, seems like exactly. an easy option. Yes, and for the for the third time, he's down the lap, and gonna yeah, he's shoot he's it, snipe it. And he has a tactical, so don't have to, don't have to worry about a non-target kill. And that should be GG. Would have been very close if PG didn't screw that up. Yes, definitely. That's a GG to Frode here. And a little less than seven minutes real time. He has finished the third map of this round. And uh, yeah, map choice is going to go back to Pidgeero now. Jero, who is shooting down the yeah. uh, stalactites, <laughs> knights, whatever. Yeah, he has to rent some, rent some frustration. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, he definitely knows that it's over. Yeah. But, oh well. We'll see. And yeah, there's the exit. Let's see. What is Pidgey gonna pick? Any predictions? <laughs> yeah, any predictions in chat about the map next map is gonna be are we gonna see some haven here? <laughs> Of course, uh, the only H3 map he can pick is Berlin right now. That's what he's hovering. So, maybe he'll actually pick it, uh, but he is just strolling through the menu. Yeah, he's just gonna, uh, he's thinking about what he could pick. Um... See. Maybe I'll pull, pull a, a contractor and try to uh, pick a Hawks Bay or something. <laughs> but by the looks of it... Funny. It will be a Berlin, maybe. Yeah. Or, or last event stream map. But yeah. he hasn't said anything yet still. Yeah, yeah. Just gonna wait for the Discord confirmation. He's hesitating, apparently. <laughs> I mean, it is it is a high-stakes game at this point to, to pick a map like Berlin, I think, because uh, there definitely is plenty of room to mess up in Berlin, since you have, like, yeah. lots of targets and everything. Um, and, yeah, he needs to win this next map, or otherwise he's out of the tournament. Yes, yes, but he has still 11 maps to pick from, so he has uh, plenty of options. Curious what he'll end up with. But I hope he <laughs> he gets on with it. Gonna want to wait forever. I mean, if... But of course he should take his time. Yeah, score will be updated, no worries. I'm just gonna wait until we uh, get the actual map pick and everything. Uh, he says he wants his revenge on Colorado, so... Oh. I'm gonna assume... Yes, there it is, Colorado. Uh, next map that we're gonna see. We have a short four minute break. So let's have a look at Colorado and see what that map is all about. Good morning, 47. We have a lead on the shadow client. ICA White Hats have traced the anonymous data received by our clients to one Olivia Hall, brilliant young hacktivist and suspect in a dozen cases of cyber vandalism. Using onion routing with state-of-the-art encryption, Hall went to a lot of trouble to stay untraceable. She is good, but we are better. Her digital trail has led us to a remote farm in Colorado, where satellite footage has revealed what appears to be the training camp for a private militia, led by an already registered target, Sean Rose, Australian environmental terrorist and explosives expert wanted for a series of public bombings. Rose was spotted near the scene of Thomas Cross's kidnapping, which makes him our prime suspect for the shadow client. Spurred by Eric Soders, the ICA board of directors has asked us to infiltrate the farm and eliminate Sean Rose, along with three other prominent militia members. Ezra Berg, retired Mossad interrogator. Penelope Graves, former Interpol anti-terror analyst, and finally, Maya Parvati, former assassin and gunrunner for the Tamil Tigers. I'll be honest with you, 47. I consider Eric Soda's reasoning hasty and ill-advised. Now, we cannot go against the wishes of the board, but we can conduct our own investigation. Whether a direct threat to the ICA or not, we need to know the Shadow Client's true agenda. I will leave you to prepare. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we are back from the break. Um, yeah, one minute 47 now exactly. Um, 
until the next and probably last spin of this round. Pigiero now needs to tie up the score here, needs to win this uh, Colorado spin to have the chance to go to a fifth map. Uh, that is going to be Froat's choice then again. So, yeah. Yeah, that is going to be... Uh, Pirtle is going to be on Pidgey. And uh, I feel like it's going to be a spicy one. Colorado always uh, prime for, <laughs> for unexpected things to happen. So we'll see. Uh, yes, it was a 2-2 before the break because I'm I'm changing the scores if I think about it in the break so uh, nobody can see when I accidentally <laughs> when I accidentally steal Pigiero his points. Um, yeah, uh, the score was updated in the break. That's why before the break it still said 2-2. But yeah, Frode von Sapienza, last uh, map. And yeah, now Pigiero's choice was, was Colorado. Uh, gonna keep it with the theme of uh, the season three and season one maps. <clears throat> no season ma two map just yet. So yeah, spin arriving yeah. in twenty seconds. And yeah, always very important on, on Colorado what the spin is. So all yours. Right, there it is. Four targets. Uh, yeah, we have to kill Sean Rose using an explosive weapon and as the hacker. Uh, Ezra Burke using an explosion accident as point man. Penelope Graves using a loud sniper rifle as the militia technician. And Maya Pavadi with a neck snap using uh, in the explosive specialist disguise. A lot of explosions here. Uh <laughs> yeah, a lot of loud kills as well. Like we got three loud kills yeah, in there. Yeah, that's true. And like I mean, yeah, snap. The, the weapon doesn't have to be a loud kill, but yeah, surely. Yeah, okay, um, that's true. The, can, can can be the breacher, but it's funny <laughs> to me. So because it's a suit, Pidgey opted for the hacker start. Uh, I always really like it if the, if you have to go hacker and don't yeah don't have to bring in the suit. Meanwhile, Fold is gonna go with a standard Vespich start. So all, also they already there are uh, different in the threat. Yes, Pigiero, uh quick on the isolation of uh, Sean here. It's gonna drag him down to the basement. Is uh, presumably gonna take out Ezra down here now as well. So he just uh, then he has uh, two targets down. Can. Uh, get Penelope very soon as well. Then only Maya remains the other side. Pidgey gets spotted. Oh, that's bad. So the first restart for Pidgeyero. In the meantime, Frode is still in this. Has now entered the basement as well. Um, looking to isola isolate Ezra Burke here. Former Mossad interrogator. <laughs> very true. All right, he is down for throat. So let's see how he uh, decides to go about this now. Be Beecher to the head from Maya. Another wizard for Pidgey. I didn't saw it this time, what, what ripped him here. But it was assume, earlier. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna assume he uh, got spotted while dragging Sean in the basement. Yes. Looked like it. So yeah, so it's, uh, it's a bit of a time difference now. Frodo is already on his way to Maya Pavadi. And if, I, if you look at the spin again, we don't actually need any items or something. Uh, we only need to, uh, like, of course you have to pick up the loud sniper rifle. Um, that Frodo, I think, already brought in. Because he started a suit, that's another advantage of the suit starting point. And, but he just has to get a propane and of course it all the disguises. Which are kind of spread out over the map. Yes. Um... So, uh, we'll see. Is, I think the point man is that that's a unique disguise, right? That's like only the point yes. man himself has it, obviously. Um, yes, exactly. <clears throat> obviously, hacker uh, the disguise that Pigiero started in, so he doesn't need like to get it from anywhere. 
but uh, the other one's explosive specialist and militia techni technician. Two disguises both of them uh, need to acquire. In the meantime, Pigiero uh, has now finally taken out Ezra and Sean, put them both in the basement, looking to get Penelope here. And over on Frode's side, I think he has everyone down except for... What happening for Pidgey? Why did the guard want oh, to enter the basement? I think he... Yeah, I think what happened there was the guard <clears throat> saw the uh, the assault rifle from Sean's bodyguard and went, and went ahead and picked it up and apparently he uh. was going through the basement there. I mean, the thing is not... Okay, the interesting thing is, neither does, the, like, when he when they pick up a weapon, that neither would they go through the basement, nor would they pick up that assault rifle. So, what? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I, definitely... Like, um, maybe it's a psychic reaction of the guard or something? I have no idea how that happened. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, Colorado is... I've never seen it before. ...is a bit known for its uh, psychic connections between people. Yeah, but like, what? Yeah. <laughs> We've seen Kalana so many times, I've played so many times, and I've never seen that. Amazing. Holy. Well, it gives me even more time advantage to... to Throat, who's now knocked out everyone in the... in the Tiction spawn. Placed the Breacher under... under Sean. Or just needs a hack, hack in disguise, but you can do that at any time. Probably got to get the... Specialist disguise first. Yeah, and I think uh, there now there are all targets uh, KO'd for Frode there, so he doesn't need to, well, KO any of them anymore. All are down. Of course, no life kills, so was able to do that. And yeah, now it's time to just collect equipment and mainly disguises for Frode. Exactly. Um, it's, uh, oh, it's interesting in Colorado, like, especially in Colorado, where you pretty much always knock all the, all the targets on first before you kill them. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Unless you have, like, the perfect conditions to just, uh, eliminate one of them while, exactly. while you're going for the other ones. I don't know what's happening for Pidgey, honestly. He has the, um, it looks like that hacker saw the, saw the, and it's, like, happening again. What's, what the fuck is <laughs> doing? Like right. what? He has a trank this okay, time, but but he's still got red bodyguard farm. What is this? <laughs> this is so irritating. Pichero has do the, that? the Yanini version of Hitman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everything is a bit, a bit oh, the fuck. <laughs> That's really fucked up. Yeah, so that's uh, another unfortunate restart for Pidgeero. In the meantime, Frode, uh, five minutes in, has got his first kill on Maya Pavadi, using the next snap as uh, Explosive Specialist. He's now looking to set up the Explosion kill on Ezra, it looks like. And yeah. I mean, that's, that's rough for Pidgey, like... He had a bit of restarts, like, but he couldn't really do anything for that one. Like, uh, it's not his yeah. fault, really. But uh, that must feel bad. Never seen that before. That's definitely so weird. feel bad. Yeah, but uh, of course, there still is plenty of room for Frode to mess this one up and just reset, unfortunately, on his last kill or something. Um, and then they would be on almost equal footing again. So we'll see. Oh, Pijero stream hanging for me right now. Mm, yeah, same. Not loading, but hope that gets fixed soon. Meanwhile, Frode get... tries to lure the point, man. He... Oh, it's game crash. Oh, and that. Oh, what? my God. Oh, that's... Well, oh, this is so unfortunate for Pidgey. Oh, God. First, he has such, such weird behavior, and now it's game crashed. That is so unfortunate. Holy shit. 
Oh, no. I mean, the, the most you can hope for now is basically that, uh, well, his, uh, the irregularities that were happen happening for him uh, are no longer happening now. That's very important. Yeah, definitely. Right, so he'll... Look. But that's how the game is. Yeah. I mean, he hasn't lost quite yet. Of course, it does look really bad for him right now. Seeing off road, uh, seven minutes in, has one kill down. But yeah, then again. He might just rip any second. That's a lot though. Yes, of course Plus two not. targets alive. Yeah, just got the uh, explosive weapon kill with the hacker disguise uh, on Sean Rose. So only Ezra Burke Ex and Penelope are missing, uh, are like left now. Yes, he does not have the access to the tornado shelter though, because Sean Rose in the <clears throat> technician's barn. It means that he either, yeah, looks like he's gonna go f grab the mask. Um, to like, he, yeah, he needs yeah. somewhere to shoot his little sniper rifle from, and yeah, he, he really, really wants the uh, wants the tiny shelter for that one. Yeah, uh, so we've seen that is sort of soundproof, and you have basically like an exit right next to it. So exactly, uh, there's basically with only one. Loud sniper rifle or like like loud weapon kill here. There is uh, that's pretty safe. Of course, you have the other explosion mixed in. Um, yeah, but all of that can be done exactly. down there. It's really weird. Like uh, in in Hitman Two, it was like totally soundproof, and you could do anything in that one. And in Hitman Three, apparently you can't. Do, like the explosives are hurt now. It's interesting. Yeah. Another restart from Pidgeotto there. Uh, that's really fr frustrating for him, obviously. Oh, sure. In the meantime... Frodo uh, has acquired the, the technician disguise needed for one of his kills. Yep. It kind of feels really ironic, like... <laughs> Pidgey has so many issues with the game, like his uh, unexpected guard behavior, yeah. the game crashed, and whatever, and showed is still on his uh, first try, not a single restart yet. Did he... But... Well, oh. Not sure if it's uh, if it's his very first try or if he had one Yeah, restart. it actually is, yeah. It is, it actually. No, no, I did have a restart, actually, yeah. Okay. But yeah, it should be nearly finished now, got the uh, technician disguise in the uh, very neat clothes, where... No, I just needs a... Uh... What does he need, actually? Point man. Second. He needs a... Uh... Point man, point man. Yes. He has point man somewhere. Yeah, there's a point man. <laughs> Alright, so... Now he... all he needs is basically preparing uh, for the final two kills. There's not much that could go wrong, but... Uh... Of course, it's not not done just yet. There's two loud kills left, so let's see how he's gonna do this. Ooh, this could be close. If he like wants to do this and then run out, it yeah. could be pretty close. First loud kill, oh, loud see. explosion, okay. done correctly. It's Other done. One. Okay, change, change quickly. Now uh, yeah, that looks like a green gun, green guns exit for me. Yep. Well, fast enough. Very nice. GG. And Fjord wins the match. Sixty-two. Yes, GG to throw here. Uh, very unfortunate, obviously, for the side of Pijero. First, so many guard, irregular guard um, issues, and then game crash. But well, that's how it is. Still, very well played from Frode here. <laughs> Not a single restart, or maybe one. I don't know. Um, so he wins the match and goes, wins the the match six. To two, uh, moves on at the tournament again. Plays against Ducker next uh, in the semifinals, somewhere within the uh, between the twenty uh, eighth of April and the thirtieth. That is 
think uh, Thursday to no, Wednesday to Friday. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, definitely a uh, hype for that. Next match is tomorrow on the 27th of April at 22 o'clock Central European time. Uh, Coates versus Chris X3, our final match in the second round. And after that, uh, we have on the round two matches done and we are going to have our four semi-finalists um, that are fighting for the final two finals spots. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks to the players, obviously, for playing. Uh, congratulations to Frode again for winning this match. Uh, thanks to Janini for co-casting this one with me. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Um, yeah, let's see if uh, anyone's online that I can that I can raid right now. So, I mean, Frode is obviously online. I don't know if he stays <laughs> online, though. Don't know either. I, I could ask him. Wait. Otherwise, Mandy would be online. Yes. So, all right, Frodo is gonna go offline anyways. Then I'm gonna raid Mandy here in a second. Uh, there it is. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, make sure to join the Discord if you want to learn more about this tournament or just find other Hitman players uh, and a nice community. Uh, see you in the next match. Bye. Bye.